All right, hello and welcome back to my tile-based system in the Unity tutorial. Today we're doing a way basically for you to alter the individual tiles in a in-game basically. So say if you had like dirt tiles and you wanted to say, all right, let's change these tiles to weak tiles, we can just click on them and it'll do it. So that and um, we can also do it in uh, boxes. So if I do the whole like whole control and drag thing that I programmed in a couple of episodes ago. You can see that we can create boxes of wheat and we also have road tiles. So we make a road here and hopefully you can see how uh, the uh, basically they'll prefer to use the road rather than trampling over the wheat unless they have to go to somewhere in the wheat. You can see how it, he went over like he went on the edge of the road then followed the edge round rather than just going through the wheat. That is something I will show you how to do. See, first to go there, and then it goes down there. All right, let's show you how to do this then. Okay, so first new class we have is basically just a tile change manager, which is essentially identical to the uh, what's one, the buildings manager, where it has a list of tiles we could create in the game, and a currently selected one that we we're, we're wanting to create. Um, basically, uh, it draws the buttons, again, like the thing, uh, building manager, so get one for each tile. And we have a method to get the tile that we've currently selected, which is decided by whatever button we press. And we also have a check if tiles valid, because uh, basically just quickly go, makes a check when the scene loads, so that if any of the tiles you've put in the tiles we can use uh, list, has not got a tile mask class for any, any reason, then it'll just remove it and then recheck the list again to make sure. Just so, like, because if we didn't do this and you had like a tile without the tile mask class, it'd just break and have, you'd, have, you'd have a broken tile and that would not be fun. So, that's not something you want. All right, so the next thing is just the uh, changes I made to the tile mask class and uh, the road and the weak tiles. So for the tile mask class, I just basically made the get F cost a virtual, so we can override it in uh, child classes or classes that inherit from this master class. So say with the road tile, we are dividing the F cost by ten. So when a uh, like entity is looking for a path, then since the cost it'll be divided by ten, it'll try to it'll probably prefer the. Uh, to use the road tiles because they have a lower cost, but it doesn't mean they'll exclusively use the road tiles, like just as much as they can. But if like they have to go somewhere, uh, yeah, if they have to use like higher value tiles and can't use roads anymore, they will use them. It's more of a like a preference rather than saying they can only go on these uh, tiles. And similarly for the wheat tile, we multiply the cost by 10 because you don't want to trample your crops, right? So the entities trying to find a path will try and avoid the wheat tiles if they can, but say if they were wanting to go to a location in the middle of a wheat field, they would be able to get there because it would just say, all right, we need to go through these uh, high cost tiles to get there. So that's it. All right, the next change is just a quick method we've added to the uh, checking for left mouse click on tiles is basically just a replace tiles method which calls basically it checks if the tile if we have selected a tile in the tile change manager and we basically just pass in to a new method in the uh, grid controller or grid generator basically change tiles and grid which i'll go on to in a minute so it'll pass in the list of currently selected tiles and it will then clear the list so we've got no selected tiles you need to do this because if you don't, it'll uh, basically have a load of null references to uh, in the selected list, and that will throw errors and not be fun. I learned that the hard way, about two hours of racking my brain trying to work out why it didn't work. But now it does, and you have to clear, so you have to clear the tiles after you like want it to change them, and you can like select them again and stuff. So yeah, that's what you have to do. And for the grid generator. Basically, it, uh, this new method called change tiles and grids, 
basically gets a list. Pass, you pass in the list of selected tiles you want to change, and it'll go through each of them and basically get the tile masterclass. So even if like it has a wheat tile instead of a, just a normal tile masterclass, it'll still get that because wheat tile inherits from tile masterclass. We then get the grid coordinates of the tile, so the X and Y, so we can access the original 2D grid of tiles and get the exact one we want to change. So basically, uh, we also need to store if the tile that we wanted to change is walkable. So when we create the new tile in its place, we can uh, set that to be either walkable or not walkable. So first off, we get the old tile, uh, assign it to old tiles for simplicity's sake, or not simplicity, uh, so you know that we're getting the old tile that is at that coordinate, uh, the X and Y coordinates, and we destroy it. And then the similar code to when we are creating the grid, we've got a position to create tile that's just the X and Y. Uh, we then instantiate a tile. So the selected tile from the tile change manager, uh, just uh, X, Y, the X, Y coordinates, and the rotation of zero. And we store that in most recent tile. Then we go through, the, we get the tile master class out of the most recent tile that we just created, and we set the grid coordinates. We then set the parent and the name twice, actually, which shouldn't be done. And then we set it to whether it was walkable or not, based on whether the tile we just destroyed was walkable. And then finally, I don't really know why we get a random. That's just my computer complaining at me. Uh, sorry, if you heard that. Uh, then we basically set the grid of the reference, uh, the grid of tiles. We set a reference to the tile we've just created. So if we were to access it again, we'd find this tile we've just created instead of the previous one. So that's what we do there. And finally, we set it active to true because the references we're using of tiles here are active to false, so we can't see them basically. And where is it? Where's the model? Yep. And yeah, we just set the name to new tile X and Y so we can actually see what it is. So yeah, that was it. I think that's the last one. Yeah. Okay, so again, here is the final product. Uh, so if we just switch to tile in mode. And say we want some weak tiles here, and maybe a road, so I'll do a straight road, and go there, and then more wheat just to surround the road. We've got a road through the farm. I'll just do a road here and here, so we've basically done that. And again, you see how they're like trying to stick to the roads, that's good. Like it's just because it's uh, changing the F value they get with the A star pathfinding, so that's good and stuff. Uh, to set this all up, just basically add the uh, tile change manager to the to the game controller and assign all the tiles you want into the tiles we can use array. And yeah, and basically the tiles just have a box collider, uh, just a wheat tile and a sprite renderer. Not wheat tile, just a whatever script that inherits from the power mask class for it. So yeah, uh, cheers for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, go check out all my stuff on itch.io, the links will be in the description. I've got the top-down shooter assets, the 2D crime game, like free roaming, malarkey, all that stuff. It's all good stuff. So we'll get it. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. So cheers for watching and goodbye.